All right, so in our last tutorial, we uh, we set up our pathfinding for our goblins. So they always move uh, closer to closer to where the player is and just follow. But our spider is not moving at all. So we just want them to kind of move in a random direction. So we're going to set that up in this video. So uh, that's going to be in our, well, we only need really, I think we only need monster.c. So I'm going to close the other ones. So that's going to be, again, we loop through all our monsters and then we check what pathfinding method they have. So if it's one, which is a spider, it's random. So we're going to remove that stuff and uh, we're going to write a function called pathfinding random. And that's just going to take a single position, and that position is going to be the level monster X position. So we'll add that in down here. It's going to be an int pathfinding random, and it's going to take a position star, and we'll just say position. Okay, let's see if these were added to our dot h. I'm not sure if they were. Include dot h. Uh, so we do have pathfinding seek, but we need pathfinding random. So just add that to your dot h. And then we'll start coding it. So what we're going to do is basically we're just going to pick a direction and move in that direction. So what we're going to do is say int random, and this will just be a random number. We're going to do a switch statement on that. So switch random. Uh, first, we have to set what the random number is equal to. So random equals rand, then modulus operator, and we'll say. five, which will give us a random number between zero and four. So that's going to give us five cases. So case zero, break, copy and paste that. And update those numbers. Five, four, three, two, sorry, four is the last case. Two, one. Okay. So we'll say that case zero, we're stepping up. Case two, we're uh, stepping down. Or case one. And case two, we're stepping left. Step right, and then finally do nothing. Do nothing. Okay, so for uh, for stepping up, we're going to take the position, and that's going to be the y coordinate, and we're going to say uh, minus one. But we don't want our uh, we don't want our monsters w running into any walls. So we first want to check that it's an open space. So we're going to say if move inch, which will obviously return the character at the coordinates that we give. Move inch. So we're going to take this position y minus one, and then just position x. We're going to say if it's equal to floor space, then we're going to move. And we're obviously going to have to create uh, special cases for when the monster runs into the user, but we'll get to that when we start combat. So we'll just copy and paste. Oh, wait, this has to be position y equals. Yeah. 
So we'll just copy and paste that if statement and add it to each case. So here's stepping down. So you're in the adding one, adding one, and then stepping left uh, instead of y being modified it's going to be x and stepping left so that's minus one just change these y's to x's final one stepping right so we're adding to x actually we can just copy and paste this and change the minuses to pluses and then for do nothing we obviously do nothing and then uh, we'll just return one, I guess. Okay, so let's see, did that work? Should have, we'll see. Um, oh, and then we'll also need to print, do our print. So uh, right now we just have our move and prints in the else, but we're gonna move them outside of the if else. So this one goes above it. So right above the if statement and then this goes right below it and so that way it will work for either monsters so clear make so there's only goblins there let's find a spider find a spider there's a spider and there he is and he's moving in a random manner so it's pretty sweet it's just totally unaffected by what's going on so I think that's pretty good and then again the goblin is uh, kind of tracking the user okay so what we're gonna do in our next tutorial is we're going to make it so that the goblin will move in a random direction when the user isn't in the room and then when the user is in the same room it will go to seeking it so what we're going to, have to do is we're going to, have to figure out kind of how we figure out which room the user is in so that will be our next step and again the code for all this is posted both the starting code and ending code so you can uh, follow along with that if you so wish